So I've been hearing a lot about this new Linux distribution that was developed by a Microsoft developer, somebody that actually works currently at Microsoft. He's created a Linux distribution and it's designed to attract people that are used to Windows 11 and you know transition them over to Linux because he's created this Linux distribution that should mimic and look and feel kind of like Microsoft Windows 11. And this all sounds very suspicious to me, right? Is this an actual Linux distribution or is this some kind of Microsoft honeypot where they're trying to basically try to get to all of you Linux users because they want to data mine you and spy on you and everything for if you use Windows, right? But those of us that don't use Windows, how are they going to get to us? Well, they want to create their own Linux distribution, possibly a uh, conspiracy theory, right? Yeah, it could be. But you also now I have noticed that all of a sudden this Anduin OS distribution that I never heard of until a couple of days ago, you know, all of a sudden there's news articles everywhere about it and YouTube videos about it. It's almost like there's some kind of money behind it. Like there's a campaign possibly from Microsoft. It's Microsoft paying all of these uh, journalists and YouTube reviewers and things, you know, all these people. Is Microsoft actually paying people to talk about Anduin OS? Did Microsoft pay me to make this video about Anduin OS? You guys know I do not take corporate money, so obviously I didn't take any money from Microsoft. Of course, if I was one of those people that would take money from Microsoft, then I'd still answer no to the question. I'd just lie to you. But let's go ahead and take a quick first look at Anduin OS. So the very first thing I did is, of course, I went to their website because I, I didn't know too much about this, but Anduin OS 1.0. So it just saw a 1.0 release September of last year. They also had more recent releases. As a matter of fact, over on DistroWatch, I noticed that they had had a release here in the last week or two. So I went and grabbed the latest ISO. One other thing I noticed is some of the tags here at the top of the page. One of them is open source and then free and then GPL v3 license. So that is the actual step in the right direction. The fact that this project does tout that it is free and open source and that it is actually GPL v3 license. I did verify that. I went to the um, GitHub page for Anduin OS and it is actually licensed under the GPL. Good job because I kind of expected it to be under uh, uh, not necessarily a proprietary license, but I thought maybe they would license it under a more permissive free license like MIT, which, you know, Microsoft typically does license a lot of their stuff under MIT if they're doing open source. But I'm happy that they went with the GPL. One thing to note about the developer behind Anduin OS, he works at Microsoft, but he does not work on Windows. Microsoft is a gigantic company and most employees at Microsoft don't actually work on Windows. And he's one of those people that doesn't work on Windows. Why choose Anduin OS here? It's because it's ready to use. The ISO is only two gigabytes inside, so it's not a terribly big or bloated distribution. It's based on Ubuntu. Ubuntu itself is not terribly big or bloated, uh, typically, uh, unless you're adding a bunch of extra stuff on top of it. Uh, it has a friendly interface. They're going to use the GNOME desktop. Now, of course, you get privacy and open source containerized. Now, this is interesting because you know, I'm not sure everyone's going to love this. Graphical applications are installed via Flatpak and keep themselves separate from the base system. So I don't know why you wouldn't use native Ubuntu packaging. Right? Why are you going with Flatpak? Um, I, of course, Ubuntu also already has snaps if you wanted to do the whole containerized thing. Uh, it just seems like a, a strange choice. Uh, by the way, this distribution is based on actually when I say it's an Ubuntu based distribution it's actually based on Debian they do add some Ubuntu repositories on top of it so you can kind of say it's based on both Debian and Ubuntu you've got three different versions here you've got an old LTS based on Jammy Jellyfish you've got a recent LTS of Noble Numbat and then Plucky Puffin is based on Ubuntu 2504 I actually downloaded this and I'm going to go ahead and spin up a virtual machine and check out Anduin OS inside of VM. Now I've already run through an installation of Anduin OS. It uses the standard Ubuntu installer and by Ubuntu installer I mean the old Ubuntu installer, the Ubiquiti installer, which is a fine installer. Of course Ubuntu now has a new Flutter based uh, installation application that they use, but this is still using the tried and true Ubiquiti installer. It installed just fine, uh, nothing to see in the installation. But you know on first login, and this is my first time logging in and, and actually checking this out, 
I've got to say it does look very Windows like you have not a Windows like background I mean it's Windows like but it's not the same as the Windows 11 wallpaper probably for copyright reasons I know some distributions get a little loose with uh, trademarks and copyrights and they use a lot of images and icons and things that you know are directly ripped from Microsoft Windows. Thankfully, we're not doing anything here. There should be no legal problems with this distribution, but we have a Windows-like wallpaper. We have a panel, our GNOME panel here at the bottom of the screen, just like your panel on Windows is at the bottom of the screen. We have our start menu, if you will, that is right here. And then we have our quick launchers, our taskbar essentially that is all centered on the panel which I'm not a fan of centering things on the panel especially things that you're going to be clicking all the time most things that happen on modern applications especially web browsers they always happen on the left hand side of the screen your uh, forward and back buttons are at the top left so putting things at the bottom and center especially something like the menu which you would click all the time you're going to be traveling a lot from the top of the screen especially when you're using things like a web browser all the way to the bottom of the screen to click on things if you're a mouse user so just for you know i understand aesthetics i guess it might look good but as far as just mouse travel and just being easy on your hands and on your wrists i think this is a, a poor choice but again the aim of this distribution is to actually mimic windows 11 which if they're if that's your goal it's done this pretty well some other things on the panel we have our little weather widget here and this is actually kind of cool uh, it says i'm in san francisco of course i'm not in san francisco <laughs> it's 14 degrees i'm assuming it's not 14 degrees fahrenheit in san francisco the u.s obviously uses fahrenheit i'm assuming this is defaulting to celsius uh, temperatures as well so you, you got some work to do as far as changing the settings here i'm not going to do that that as far as you know sharing geolocation of exactly where I'm at so I'm not going to actually configure this widget but this is a nice widget I actually really think this is sharp having that weather widget here I think already I mean just the very first thing I look at I'm impressed that they've included that I'm assuming that's a GNOME extension some other things you have over here in this area let me move my head out of the way we have what looks to be a sys tray and of course your standard kind of a GNOME sys tray where you can switch for example the style from dark to light you've got some networking stuff going on as well I'm not going to play with any of that and then of course you have your clock if I click on the clock we get our calendar and we get our notification let's see what's installed out of the box because they talk about this being kind of a minimal lightweight distribution as far as the ISO is not very big so let's go ahead and do all apps uh, let's see back yeah is this actually all the applications if this is all the applications this is actually pretty awesome because you know it's going to let you I guess install the applications you actually want to run it just has a few basic things of course it's got the Firefox web browser which also has a quick launcher down here but let's launch Firefox and let's go ahead and check what version of firefox we are on if i go to help and about firefox this is firefox 138 and i'm assuming that that was installed as a flat pack i wonder if i can open a terminal here uh, control alt t does actually open a terminal and let me zoom in here if i do a flat pack list let's actually just quickly see if there's anything installed as a flat pack where is Flatpak? So Flatpak is here, but Flatpak list doesn't actually list anything. So uh, I, I thought they said all the graphical applications would be installed as a Flatpak. I guess is that going forward? Is everything a native package uh, on here at first? Let me actually do a apt list dash i for apt list and then just the installed packages. It's going to give me everything that's installed. And if I uh, let me up arrow and grip for Firefox. Let's just see what package Firefox. Firefox was installed via the apt package manager. You can see there is Firefox. So it was not installed as a snap. It was not installed as a flat pack. Snap is probably not even here if they've got uh, flat packs uh, enabled. Yeah, snap D is not even on the system. So flat pack is here, but nothing out of the box is installed as a flat pack. Back to the menu system files. I'm assuming that is GNOME's Nautilus file manager. And it is a okay file manager, nothing wrong with it. And we also have console. Console, of course, was the terminal. And if I click on it, it's back into the terminal. I noticed it remembered that I zoomed in, right? Because <laughs> I had zoomed in earlier. If I zoom back out, let me, oh, there we go. 
I had to remember the key binding and then let me exit. And if I control alt T to launch the terminal again, yeah, it remembers that. Zoom back out, exit, control alt T. Yeah, that is neat. I, I have never seen a terminal remember if you were zoomed in or not on uh, exit. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if that's strictly a console feature or if they've done any uh, additional work to that, but that is actually very nice. Then we have our software center. I actually do want to play with this. Let's actually install something and actually see if we do actually get flatbacks. So let's install, uh, I don't know, something that's probably not here out of the box, GIMP. GIMP's kind of a big program, but let's go ahead and install it. Yeah, it's going to default to installing it from Flathub. You do have the option, though, to install the dev package, so I'm glad that that is here as well, because probably most people will probably want the native packages for most things, because uh, especially if you're running something like Ubuntu, you're not necessarily wanting a rolling release. You're not wanting packages that auto-update typically for most things. You know, some things you may want things that are constantly rolling, like your web browser. It's kind of important to have an up-to-date web browser, but for things like, you know, GIMP, for example, you know, I just give me the, the latest version that's in the uh, Ubuntu repos, and I, I really don't need a container for that. Back to the menu system, we have Shotwell for our uh, image viewer, our, our, our photo organizer, if you will, camera. What the hell is camera? It's such a generic name. Gnome really makes me mad <laughs> with these names. It's it's camera, camera 47 dot beta. That's not the actual binary name of this program. I have no idea what the actual name is, uh, but it doesn't matter. If, if, if Gnome doesn't want to take the names of their applications seriously, then I'm not going to take it seriously either. We also have weather. No, Gnome weather. <laughs> Welcome to weather. I'm not going to set that up. Uh, text editor. Yeah, is this gedit? Uh, let's see. If I go to about text editor, this is not gedit. It's just text editor. The GNOME project text editor. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Now, anyway, there's not really much here. They do install my favorite calculator program, Calculate, which is a GTK application. This is much better than the standard GNOME calculator. This is Calculate GTK 5.5.1. That is a really smart choice, so I've got to give the Anduin dev uh, credit for that. I think that's a really smart choice. Events is our PDF viewer. GNOME videos for playing video. Rhythmbox is our music player. I think that's a smart choice as well. I go into the menu system and about Rhythmbox, this is 3.4.8 a music manager and playback software for GNOME. Let's close that window. And other than that, we have uh, some system settings tools. So let's actually go into the settings here. And if I go all the way down and go to system, and if I go into about, this is Endwin 1.3.0. Uh, I gave the system six gigs of RAM. I, I gave this uh, virtual machine 20 gigs of space as well. I was going to see if it gave any details about, uh, you know, GNOME uh, as far as what version we're on. We're obviously using Wayland. Um, other than that, you know what? I'll just go to the terminal for a lot of this stuff. It'll make my life easier. Let's first run HTOP. Let's see what kind of system resources we're using. Now, I did just open and close a lot of things, so this may be a little higher than, say, a fresh, cold reboot. But right now, it's using not much CPU. And then the RAM, it's using about 1.1 gigs of RAM. That's pretty standard for GNOME. Let's check what kernel we have installed. If I do a uname-r, this is kernel 6.14.0. Now that is interesting that HTOP was installed out of the box. Ubuntu typically doesn't install. There's two things I always complain about. HTOP is not installed out of the box on Ubuntu and Vim. It's Vim here. If I do a Vim on the .bash RC, Vim is not installed. So that's one thing I think the Anduin OS devs probably should add is add a real text editor. I, I'm sure Nano is here. Nano is not something that uh, a lot of especially power users are going to want. Leave Nano on the system for for people that want it, but eh, install Vim. I just people will complain if Vim's not there. One last thing I want to do, let's check out the wallpapers that are installed out of the box. So if I right click on the desktop and go to change background, let's see if they include any cool wallpapers. They do not. They have a light and a dark version. So if I change from dark mode to light mode, we get a different wallpaper to fit the light theme. Although to be honest, I would rather do the dark wallpaper with the light theme. 
And for dark mode, I would actually rather do the light wallpaper <laughs> with the dark thing. For me, I like the contrast, but I understand a lot of people want dark on dark. Uh, so, yeah, and that's probably the way I would run it. I actually do quite like the default theming here in Anduin OS. So there you have it, a quick and cursory look at Anduin OS. A fine distribution, those few minutes I spent with it. It's Ubuntu based, Ubuntu's a fine distribution. So I'm sure Anduin OS is solid as far as if you actually wanted to install it and run it, I'm sure there wouldn't be, you know, any kind of major hiccups or anything. You know, and I was kind of joking earlier. I know this is not a Microsoft honeypot. It's not some kind of secret plan to get at us Linux users and steal all our data. Uh, at least I was paid to say that. Now, before I go, I need to actually thank my producers. I need to thank these guys here. Matt, Steve, 40 millimeter, Cap Caveman, Darla, Flea, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Arion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Profit, Roland, more Gentoo, Ubuntu, Willie, and Microsoft. I'd also like to thank each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. Well, these guys, this quick look at Anduin OS would not have been possible. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like Anduin OS. Subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.